Things are getting intense in the stock market, and we need to talk about it. I am Dr. Stock, doctor of education, and no dad joke, I just have a curiosity that I would like to express. Have you ever seen the signs that say no shirt, no shoes, no service, but they never ever mention anything about pants? Okay, Tesla and NVIDIA. I want to talk about each of their stock prices in relation to their earnings that are coming up. Tesla has one coming up in a little over a week or so. And then NVIDIA has their earnings coming up in a little over a month or so. And I think that there's two important contrasts to make there. So we're going to take a look at SPY and QQQ as they're going to have a, a bias towards what we see happening or they are going to bias the results for Tesla and NVIDIA. And then also I have been talking about Bitcoin and NPs. I want to touch on those briefly. So let's kick things off with SPY. And in the pre-market hours down just a little bit. Just a little bit earlier, we're down a little bit more, probably because of bank earnings coming out, JP Morgan, Bank of America. We got reports of delinquencies uh, yesterday uh, that uh, for credit card payments that have hit a 12-year high. And uh, that's something that I talked about going back to last year as we see those inflation numbers come out. And I thought it would have had an impact, but it turns out that the market loves to climb the fear mountain. So we had a really nice 2023 and into 2024 and now we're starting to see more of that come to fruition with the uh, the high levels of debt, the delinquencies coming on top of it. And uh, I got to say, the credit card companies stand to benefit from those late payments uh, that that come into them. And then uh, banks just need to set up in, in the event of defaults, uh, setting cash aside for that one. So what we see SPY right now, somewhat steady on that one. We've got the 50 day down here that we haven't tested out yet. We keep on finding support right at about 512. 508 is going to be critical for us to hold on to for that support to the upside. We really, well, first of all, we need to crack back over 518 and then taking on the all time high right around 525 if we're going to go to the upside on this one. So be watching what we get for the 50 day if we tend to drop down that low. And then actually, as a matter of fact, we have the 50s. Let's move this up here to where we're finding that support before. And then you can see the 50 EMA and SMA right here, right at about that 508 number. Should we come all the way down and test that value? We could see what we saw in the queues yesterday. I talked about the fact that we found support one, two, three times, now four times already down at this 50 day simple moving average. And you can see what happened yesterday with a little bit of return to strength in tech. And then some of that with Nvidia, as I said, over in my discord group, I put out an announcement that Nvidia is likely not going to stay at the 850 level for long. And then I do say still, I said seeing 800, certainly within the realm of possibility, I think that the market bias from SPY and QQQ is what we see in the S&P. And then what we also see in the NASDAQ 100 from the overall markets, that can be something that would impact the trading multiples of all stocks. And then Nvidia being one of those stocks could certainly be impacted, although far better insulated than other stocks that are out there given its position in the AI space. So for QQQ, we still need to make it back up over this resistance that we're finding right at about 446, 447. You can see yesterday that we peaked out right in between those 446.33 before retreating a little bit and then closing at 445.37. So this yellow line across the top is a good line. We managed to peekaboo up over it twice before quickly retreating both times in big ways. So we'll have to see breaking that 447 is going to be huge for us. We want to see a full candle open and close up above that. To see that rally continue, maybe NVIDIA is going to lead the way at least one more time for us leading up to those earnings. So quick touch on Bitcoin and Enphase here. So Bitcoin still riding along this now support, breaking out of the symmetric triangle pattern that we have. I still think that we could possibly see a new all-time high coming in sometime soon, right around 77,000-ish. And that comes from what we see right here from this bottom right here from a somewhat offset double bottom going from the lower to the uh, the lower trend line to the upper trend line and taking that minimum amount that 77,000. It could certainly be higher. If we continue that push, we had a lot of settling on the daily RSI that we have right here, kind of weeble wobbling right around 50. And so with that little bit of rest in it, maybe it puts a little bit more gas in the tank and we get a little bit more upward momentum from that. We're going to have to watch and see. But that's what I think absolutely can happen. So moving over to end phase, End phase yesterday tried out for, let me see, one, two, three, the fourth time is 200 day. I think it's still pushing on towards this golden cross moment. I keep dollar cost averaging into it. I added more shares yesterday. And um, this is one that I think is going to uh, seriously outperform for us. So even the, uh, the high inflation numbers that we saw, I still think that with rate cuts coming in the near future, I think that people can't let this go given the, uh, the fall that it's been on. And I think that we're going to see an outperforming technical here. All right. So what you came for, Tesla. 
Tesla leading up to their earnings. Check out the 50 EMA and SMA. We are below them. We're also below the 200 day. So we're in bearish territory for this one. The RSI has been climbing on us recently. We're getting up near 50. We have to overtake that 50 solidly on the RSI. Let me expand that just a quick moment for you because so you can see it a little bit better. And we, we were able to peekaboo up over that, sold off again. And now we're trying another run. We're getting higher lows on this. So we're seeing a build in that momentum. We need to break up over that 50 solidly on this one. And I don't know, so we might see some of that leading up to earnings. I think that earnings are probably going to settle <clears throat> right around what we see for the 50 period EMA and SMA to put in a big question of are we going to get some sort of surprise for guidance going forward for Tesla or is it going to be softer than expected? I think a lot of the of the uh, the lower delivery numbers that we got and everything like that, I think a lot of that's already been priced in. And then we see that hard support coming in right around 160. We tried that out twice and both times came up off of that. Uh, pretty darn well. And so we have that range from 160 up to about 180. So look for that price to be around 180 around their earnings time. And I think it's going to be highly volatile. I likely put out a, a pretty far out of the money strangle play leading up to those earnings with a short, with a short expiration to take full advantage. And if you guys want to see that, you can check out the link down in the description for the Patreon. So for Tesla leading up to their earnings and their earnings date, as per what we see here on TradingView, is on Tuesday, April 23rd. So this coming Tuesday, let me see what date that's going to be. So today happens to be the, the, let me see. So we have the 16th coming up for next Tuesday, so the one following. So about a week and a half out from that date. And uh, and I expect that we're going to be around that those moving averages, given that the market doesn't wildly change between now and then. So if the market does wildly change between now and then, we could see how that influences Tesla stock. So if we get a wild rise in things, especially interest rate sensitives like Tesla, then, well, they could move up, maybe give us stronger than that. We still need to watch towards that earnings date. But I think that there's going to be a lot of worry and uncertainty. Uh, but I think there's also a lot of excitement that goes into it. And that's why I think we're going to stabilize right around that 180-ish value, give or take $5. 175 to 185 would then be that range. So moving over to NVIDIA. NVIDIA, I said, likely would not spend much time right around the 850 level. As of the pre-market, well, yesterday's close, 906. The pre-market today was down under 900 again. Now it's back up over 900. We're going to have to watch that. That 900 line is going to be important for us. If we can break over that 900 line, then what we have and what I think is going to happen is I think given that the markets do not dump on us in the meantime, reducing the multiples of all stocks, given that the markets are somewhat similar to what they are now or better, I think that we could get a rise to that four-figure $1,000 mark for NVIDIA leading up to their earnings. And I think that there's just, there's going to be massive excitement here. There's not the same worry that we have with Tesla. There's still a lot of questions about ongoing demand and then also supply constraints that might actually limit their ability to generate further revenue. We're going to have to see that the H100, H200 sales, those are going strong. Uh, Blackwell 100s that are able to be just swapped out for, I believe it was the H200s. That's going to be critical for them. And then the development for the B200 series coming out after that. Uh, which is just an uh, just an absolute game changer, even for NVIDIA themselves. So the fact that they continue to innovate and that this is an AI race, and there's a lot of companies that are going to be spending deeply over time. This is going to be a, sustain, a sustained buy by all these companies. NVIDIA is still in that number one slot, and people are, who want that top dog are going to go there as much as they can. And then after that, seek for alternatives such as AMD uh, and Intel. And Intel, just as a side note, I think is getting a little bit overbeat up at this point in time. And uh, I think that they're going to have their time to shine. AMD is probably also going to have probably a rally over the next month or so. We're going to have to watch that. But again, that assumes that the market doesn't change much from where it's at right now. So for NVIDIA, I think that we have an all-time high coming in between now and their earnings. My apologies there. Let me get that back off the screen. That $1,000 mark, here we go. I will uh, put this up here as my prediction leading up to their earnings. So let's drop that down to an exact 1000 on the chart. There we go. And I'll even put out on the screen here. That way it's out there for all of YouTube with Dr. Stocks. Earnings prediction, we'll call it. There we go. Perfect. So there's that $1,000 mark. We're spanning it right with all that text. I think that that's about where we're going to go. So that means that we put in new all-time highs. That it also assumes that we break that double top that happens right there. I don't know that it's going to be right. I don't know that we're going to see that excitement. I don't know that the markets are going to hold out. But I will say that NVIDIA is a company that I continue to be excited about. I was covering them all the way back 
when they were about 230 or so dollars. And then when they had their, their massive pop, I was like, man, that, that's a lot of hype that's going in there. Then I started actually cranking out their numbers and I found out, you know, it wasn't hype that there's actually potential here, that there's a lot of reason why it's actually trading the way that it is. And I saw a lot of upside since then. And I'll tell you what, it's even exceeded my expectations, which I thought were conservative, but still bullish. And I'll tell you what, even at these numbers that we have right here, given that they sustain what they're doing right now through at least the end of 2025, which the future is anybody's guess. I got to tell you, like, I still think that there's a lot of green. I think that there's a lot of outperformance that we're going to see versus the overall markets from NVIDIA over the next, let me see right now, it is April. So I would say that over the next 12 months to 24 months that we're going to, to see that happen through the end of 2025 into 2026. So Pretty darn excited about it. I think that there's a lot to be excited about in the markets. I think Tesla earnings are going to be super interesting. I think there's going to be a lot of movement that happens as a result of Tesla's earnings. And uh, for NVIDIA, I think that that big run is going to be leading up to the earnings for NVIDIA. And then then it's anybody's guess what happens as a result of those earnings. They pulled forward. They, they skipped a quarter in my earnings projection that they went right on to the next quarter after that. And uh, and then we saw those results. That was pretty cool. We'll see if they can happen to make that again, especially with the issue of, uh, of the new chipsets that they have coming out. So thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you want to talk to me and my community members, check out the link down in the description for the Patreon. You can also see my buys and sells and how I'm playing this market, the stocks that I'm dollar cost averaging into and my options plays also. And then also, if you want to get access to a technical analysis trading course to learn to do technical analysis like I do, there's also a link down in the description for that as well. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I am Dr. Stock, doctor of education. Remember, my friends, that learning is earning, and we'll see you in the next video.